Hello everybody, Miss Jackie Russell here and happy Mass Monday. And hey guys, today we have a treat. We have Miss Bonnie joining me, or I'm joining her, whichever way you want to look at it. And that would be Bonnie from Bonnie's Bargains. And before I get into this collab, I am going to be using the 24 karat gold collagen eye mask. And that is going to be my mask choice today. And it looks like this. And we're going to get those on real quick. They're nice and emollient. I hope I have that on right. Half the time, I really don't know what I'm doing with these masks. I'll be honest with you. I just look at it and I think it goes on this way. And if it doesn't, well then... I guess that's okay, it's not going to hurt anything. But I just thought my eyes could use a little collagen today. I'm going to just use these. So anyways, back to this collaboration. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to this Mass Monday collaboration with Bonnie's Bargain. And I think most of you know Bonnie, but if you don't, you need to go over and check her out. She is a wonderful lady. She's my good friend. We've been friends for, I don't know almost a couple of years now on the YouTube. That's how we met. And she is just wonderful. She's such a loving, gracious person. She does a lot of different things on her channel. She does a lot of Mass Monday collaborations with all size channels. She has really helped with all kinds of, I would say, incentives for helping people grow their channels. She's really all about that. I got a fly running around me. <laughs> and she also was part of the 2022 Gratitude Awards. And her and Stephanie with North Carolina Mountain Mama had got that going. And she worked with Stephanie actually on that. But they did a great job. And I'm not sure if they're going to be doing that again for 2023 or not. But other than that that took a lot of their time let me tell you that was dedication and it was a huge success she also does hauls she does hauls of all kinds dollar tree amazon she does what's that morning save show she does all kinds of hauls so you want to be sure and check those out and of course like i said she does the mass mondays and she does a lot of collaborations and she joins us on our Dollar Tree collaboration and a few others that she and I have done together. She's hosted some that I've been a part of hers and then I've hosted and she's been a part of mine. But like I said, we've been good friends for a long time. She is a darling woman. And also if you have a prayer need, she will pray for you and she will get the prayers out. If you're someone that wants that, then I would definitely, you know, contact her and let her know you have a prayer request. Like I said, she will pray for you, and I will pray for you too if you're needing special requests. I just do it privately, but sometimes she'll post it if you want the need out publicly. So anyways, I just thought I would mention that real quick because she's just a wonderful, beautiful woman, and I love her. Now, as I said, I'm going to be doing this little mask, and our task was to talk about our jobs that we've had all of our life, and oh my goodness, you know, I'm 63, and Bonnie's just a few years older than me, so we probably got lots of history, or I do, I don't know of a lot of different jobs. I started off just being a little waitress, probably when I was 13 or 14, yeah, you could do that back then. They didn't have an age limit when you could go to work in the U.S., and I did that, and then in high school, I was part of the VOE, that's Vocational Education Program, when I was a junior, I believe. And with that particular vocation, I did business. And I picked all business subjects in this particular business class that would teach me all kinds of things in administrative and using machines. And back then, it was typewriters and the 10-key adding machine. And I did really well in that, and I got a job at Talco Aluminum, which was a aluminum, I think they did aluminum doors is what they manufactured. And I became the assistant to the accountant. And his name was Bobby Springer. And I ended up getting the job, so to speak, or the 
position that no one else tried out for in my class and I end up was paid the highest. Back then they only had to pay you minimum wage which I think might have been a dollar seventy and I started out at two dollars and twenty five cents an hour which doesn't sound like much now but that was a lot for a, a teenager that was only 16 years old and it was in accounting and that was kind of my major back then and I was very good with numbers I was so good with numbers that one time we were doing his depreciation of all the inventory that they have in the building all their equipment and everything and everything was by number and then it would have an evaluation of depreciation. And I was sitting there in his office and he was asking me the depreciation for the, the press, for this. I don't really know what all the equipment thing was called now. And I was just spouting out numbers. I was just telling him the amounts. And he finally looked up from his desk and he goes, where's your, where's your data form? You know, like, where's your piece of paper that's telling you these numbers? I said, oh, it's back there in there on my desk. And he said, what? Oh my gosh, he just like, come unglued. And he wanted to know where that, how was I just spouting out numbers? I said, cause I know them. I go, they're in my head. I have a memorization for numbers. And all I gotta do is just see it and, and, and associate it with something. And I know the number. He goes, that is ridiculous. You cannot do that. Nobody can do that. And I said, well, okay. So I went and got the sheet, and then he went over everything that I'd already given him, and every single one of them was 100% accurate. So yeah, I was very good with numbers. <laughs> and to this day, I can still use that skill when I go anywhere shopping throughout the whole store, no matter how long I've been in the store. If I look at the price and look at the product, I know the price when I go to checkout and I'm 100% correct when they're scanning it through. And if they scan anything wrong, I can correct them immediately. And I know I'm right if I've looked at it and scanned it in my brain, so to speak. One lady at Walmart tested me on that one day and went through about 10 products and she was just amazed. She goes, okay, how much is this one? How much is this one? Before they'd ring up. But anyway, I've gotten sidetracked and I've got to get back on task. Now, after I graduated high school, I went to college for just a little bit there, and while I was going to college, I did work for this Talco Aluminum, and I drove back and forth, you know, to meet my school classes and all that. I, uh, I met Kevin, and I got married, and we moved to Missouri, and I didn't work for a little while there. Of course, it wasn't too long. We had our first child, and I was kind of like a homemaker, I guess you'd say, for a few years. But after a few years, I just felt like I needed to get out of the house. The first thing I did was I volunteered to be a teacher's aide, and I did that when my children were like in the like preschool part of the, I guess, school, like three and four years old. And I did that for a couple of years. And then after they got into kindergarten and on, I decided to apply for this job that was an assistant, administrative assistant again, for another manufacturing company. And this was gonna be a part-time job where I would share it with another lady. We would have the same position and she would work three days and I would work two. And the idea of this was to get me in there, get me trained because she was getting ready to have a baby and they needed someone to take over. So I did that, I did all kinds of skills and administrative, and I also had to do government contracts for them. They were a tarpaulin manufacturer. And the interesting story about this one was they needed, the contracts were very tedious and everyone they had ever turned in had always come back with errors, every single one. And I did my first contract and I turned it in to Harlan, that was the president of the company. And he said, he goes, well, you need to go back and redo this and make sure it's right. And I said, well, it is right. I go, I don't need to redo it, it's correct. And he got a little upset with me. He goes, well, I'm gonna turn this in. He goes, but I'm not gonna be happy if it comes back like all the rest of them do. And I said, well, I don't think it's gonna come back. But anyways, he sent it off and it didn't come back. It went straight through and he was so impressed because he had never had that happen before. But again, it had to do with numbers and detail. I'm very detail focused and numbers. So anyways, after that, I, uh, I can't remember exactly why I moved out of that particular job. I really don't remember why. 
I left that company, but I really did like it. It was part-time work, and it was great because I could be home with the kids. But later on, I uh, decided to do my own thing, so I become a consultant, a Lady Love Cosmetics consultant, and some of you may be familiar with that, I don't know. It was based out of Dallas, and they competed with Mary Kay, and it was an aloe vera company, and I did very well with that, doing the little home parties and selling cosmetics and skin care, and I also did House of Lloyd's. And House of Lloyd's was a decorating deco type home to home party thing. So I did those two things as kind of like my little entrepreneur and my own little schedule. And after that, a few years went by after I had all my children, I decided that I was, I gained a lot of weight and then I lost a lot of weight. And I got in really good tip top shape and people were just amazed. I can remember being teased by some people saying, something about you know how chunky I'd gotten and I was on my little plan of action and I said well you just wait and see you ain't gonna be laughing for too long and I would say in about a year's time I'd lost all that weight and I'd worked out and did weights and everything and I mean I was really looking I was what they call that buff yeah I had a six-pack abs and everything I was buff And that impressed so many people, they kept saying, you need to, you ought to open up a fitness place. You'd be good at that. And I was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just kept getting requests. And because I had that entrepreneurial spirit, I decided to take a survey. I mailed out about 500 letters to the area that I lived in because the banker said that no one would support a fitness place in a small town. I lived in Herman, Missouri, and they only had about 3,000 people, and he said they just wouldn't do it. So I sent out a survey to about 500 people and got, they had to send it back, they had to mail it back, put their own stamp on it, and I got over 350 of them back with positive, yes, I would like to have that in my town. And so I put them all in my little briefcase and went up to the bank and just pretty much dumped it out and said, well, here's all my <laughs> here's all my letters back and yeah, people want to support this. And I was able to get a loan and I opened up my own business and I called it Body Image, the fitness place. And I did that successfully for about three years. After about three years, we decided we were gonna move to Texas and that was my hometown and so I put my business up for sale and sold it and then we moved to Corpus Christi, Texas and we were in Corpus Christi, Texas. Now y'all just have to remember I have this very strong entrepreneurial spirit so when I got to Corpus Christi it was like a blank slate and I was just looking at jobs and things and I decided I wanted to be an account executive and I didn't have a complete bachelor's degree, so keep that in mind. I just had some college, but I had a lot of business experience and I had a lot of accounting, like I was telling you, experience. And I minored in psychology. So all of that kind of worked hand in hand. And I walked into the newspaper there and they were looking for a direct mail account executive that would be able to go out and sell advertising for direct mail and they said well what's your experience i said well i've never done this per se before i said but i can tell you one thing i just moved here and i've got y'all's direct mail and my mail and it's crap i said there's so many things that a new person would want to know when they move into your city not to mention the people that live here already i said i think i can greatly improve your program and bring you lots of new business well I did. Um, They only put me on a commission only type thing, meaning that they gave me three months to show that I could do what I could do. And after that, I wouldn't get any money. Like they were going to pay me like 300 a week, kind of like a draw for three months. And after 90 days, then I would have to be making straight commission. And I agreed to it because why not? So, I mean, I felt real confident in what I could do. And within six weeks, I think, I was already making way more than what they had agreed to pay me. And was I didn't need their draw anymore. I was making my own commission, straight commission. They paid me 18%. It was a great commission. And they told me the sky was the limit. But over the years, my sky was pretty high, and I ended up making more than the CFO there. And that didn't go over too well. So they kept cutting my payback. 
And I just kept crying out to God, saying, look what they're doing to me, Lord. They just keep taking away. They told me sky's the limit. And they were trying to hold me down to, I think, about 75000 a year and not in the six figures. And every time they would knock me down, the Lord would just pick me back up. And I, with less percentage, I would even sell more and make more. And it just kind of blew their mind a little bit. It actually blew mine, too. But I was very good at what I did. And back to that detail, I didn't have eras. In the print business, you can't have eras. Well, I mean, you can, but you lose your business. If you want to keep your business, everything has to be proofed and correct. And I think, you know, of course, there's always a few that might have got through. But I won Account Executive of the Year because my credit ratio you know like giving a credit to a vendor that had bought advertising from me was point zero 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 one i mean like there just wasn't any and that impressed the cfo and the ceo because no one had ever really ever done that before so that was you know i did really good in that position and they ended up putting me in a dallas position that was my second one i did a regional for Texas and I was in that position for several years and finally moved back to the Dallas area. After I was in the Dallas area I did not want to work for another company. I decided again I wanted to be my own boss so I started my own advertising magazine in the Mesquite, Texas, Forney, Texas and Wills Point area. I ended up uh, recruiting people under me and they had areas in DeSoto, Dallas, all of Van Zandt County, Kaufman County and around and I did that for about 10 years and during that time I was having my dog business and my dog business was more like just a hobby business. I had a few dogs and I was breeding the Jack Russells. I ended up adding of course the Pooh Babies. Over time I decided that that was more profitable for me and I got to be at home more than doing the magazine. During 2008 that was when the recession hit really hard and it was really kind of bad. So advertising is the first thing that people will cut when they're in their business because they're having to get lean. And so it was very difficult and I decided that during that time I would just get out of the advertising business and I went into full-time hobby professional breeding you know and I'm still doing that that was in 2007 I had my first litter and here we are I'm still breeding but I'm getting ready to retire out of it but I still will have a few litters but we uh, started off with the Jack Russells I have some of the best parson Jack Russells in the United States and I have sold many a Jack and I still get numerous inquiries I've had some people buy a couple of my breeder dogs knowing I was going to be going into retirement because my bloodlines are of the Fox Warren my nail of England and they've got hundred year old pedigrees so they are outstanding and I've even had some of my puppies that people have left me have won lots of awards that they've taken to shows and a lot of hunting dogs I've had some buy some and take them over to Africa for hunting they do they do hunting and they do roundup with the Jack Russells over there. And I've got some that's lived in Germany and Canada and the Virgin Islands, St. Thomas, and then, like I said, all the USA. I've got a lot throughout the world in the last 17 years. And that's my number one breed as far as purebred. I do some AKC poodles, but I'm not big in that as far as known for that. And, but I do have some, and the others are designers like Chipoosh Chihuahua Poodle, Malchis, that would be Maltese Chihuahua, Chorkies, that's uh, Chihuahua and Yorkie, Morky, that's Maltese and Yorkie, and Yorkie Poo is Yorkie with Maltese. Yeah, a lot of different little designer breeds. That just flew off. I think I was one of the first ones that started with the Chipoos, and I actually got kind of well known for Chipoos, and I have quite a few of them around because that was my, after the Parson Russells, I did Chipoos. And it was an accident how I got started. And I'm supposed to tell an embarrassing moment, but I don't know if that's an embarrassing moment or not, but I bought two AKC Chihuahuas to have AKC long coat Chihuahuas and my AKC long coat Chihuahua female ended up getting with my poodle. And so I had a Chipoo. 
and I was very upset because I wanted to have the AKC and when they were born they were so beautiful and I thought I'm keeping this white one and I named her Portia and I had her for over 12 years she's passed now but I love the Chipu breed and so did others I put the other one up for sale they were named I think at that time they were named Paris and London and someone bought London and then it just went from there and to this day I still get requests for Chipu's quite a bit I am one of the few breeds that does cheapoos as well, but now I'm slowly going out of all of that, so there'll be less and less breeds. But as far as an embarrassing moment, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know an embarrassing moment. I can't recall an embarrassing moment at work. I'm sure there is one because everybody has them, but I... Off the top of my mind, I just, right now, I just cannot think of the most embarrassing moment that I had. If I just did a generalization of an embarrassing moment, it would be my vocabulary. When, I guess when I was growing up, I just made up words, I guess, and when I did work at Corpus Christi and was in the account executive world, I would use words that people had never heard. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't even give an example of that. Well, I can tell you one. I just thought of one. Meminum. I could not say meminum. I think I called it minimum. Minimum. That would be my most embarrassing moment of having to be taught how to say meminum. I mean, they had to sit there with me and say men a mum because I had remembered it the way I said it for so long, which the way I said it was totally wrong. And I wish I could remember how I said it, probably minimum. You know, just some weird thing that was totally wrong and I was taught how to say it. Now, I hope y'all have been able to hear most of this through my dogs. I have several puppies that are over 10 weeks old and they're out running around playing. But now it's time for the giveaway. With Bonnie, we were said to choose five items and I've got my five items in this bag here. And for the rules, you do have to be 18 years or older. You must have an address within the continental USA and or have a friend or family member if you live elsewhere in the world and I'll ship it to them and they can get it to you whenever that may be. But that is the only way I can ship that way. With shipping, it's just gotten outrageous, but you do have to have a Continental USA address that I can mail to. You must be publicly subscribed to both Bonnie's Bargain and Miss Jackie Russell, and I'll have linked to her channel and her video down in my description. The U.S. Post Office will be how I ship it, and I'm not responsible if they lose it or damage it. I will package it up the best I can, and I haven't really had too much trouble with that. And the other thing is YouTube and or any brands that I may show or talk about are not in any way, shape, or form affiliated with this giveaway. And my secret code word is going to be Bonnie. So use Bonnie in a sentence down below and you will be eligible to be entered into this giveaway. It's going to last one week and the winner will be announced on the 18th, I think, or the 19th, somewhere around there. Probably on the next Mass Monday, announce winners and I think that's how it's going and Bonnie may have a little bit variation in her rules and when she's going to actually announce the winner so keep that in mind my winner may be announced on the mass Monday next week or it may be announced on the community tab it just depends if I get a mass Monday out I am preparing for a vacation and time is starting to get short now the giveaway the first thing that you're going to get in my giveaway is a pair of these 24 karat gold eye masks that I'm using today, the Umasis 24 karat. It says to be on there for 10 or 15 minutes and might have been on there a lot longer, but I don't care, that's all right. Maybe it'll get do a little bit better job for me. You're gonna get a soon foot mask. You're going to get one of my favorite masks. Guys, this is a Korean mask that is marine luminous Pearl Deep Moisture Mask. This is a one, two, three step. Number one, 
you start with marine waterfall essence you put that on your face number two you put this wonderful mask on and there's so much essence in this mask that you can use it more than once if you'll put your mask back in there and then the same with the step number three over here you can then moisturize your eye area and all face and eye and usually there's enough to do another round of that this is my favorite of all time this is a wonderful mask now while you have your mask on i'm going to do one of these jade guasse massagers and this will also be something that you can use after your mask where you would you know lift up to help your skin you just push along there to use this but this will be in there and then the last item five items this will be number five it's going to be an eye kit trio and this is going to include an eyebrow pencil a liquid eyeliner and a mascara after you get done with all your beauty part of your masking and getting your face all moisturized and you can have just of makeup so that is my giveaway and it'll be for one lucky person and again use that code word that I mentioned before and let's go ahead and take these off and see how they did it's already kind of dried from being on there so long but I think it did really good so hey guys that was my mask Monday and I want to thank Bonnie for asking me to do this with her again we have collaborated in several different collaborations over the last couple years and had just a wonderful time and I can't say enough how much I love and respect Bonnie and if you have not met her you will love her too so go over and check out her channel and if you haven't subscribed be sure to subscribe and hit the like button on both our videos and as for today and this mass monday with bonnie's from bonnie's bargains that's all i have be sure and check my descriptions for any other giveaways that may be going on currently and as usual i wish you all a bless and happy day bye bye